Judge, I have to ask you straight off the bat. I mean, Oscar Pistorius, a world-renowned athlete, probably uh, one of the most famous South Africans. There's an attempt on his life on a major highway. How on earth would that not be investigated properly? I would have expected him to report it, in part for the reasons that you've given. He knows that he's not just a nobody. He knows that he's a top athlete and he's a hero of this country. So uh, the attack on him, the attempted murder, uh, could be linked to something very much bigger. And uh, I would have expected him to report it. Uh, our highways, I suspect, have got cameras. I don't think it was reasonable for him, I don't think it's reasonable for him to claim that uh, you can just assume the police would have had no success. And of course this issue of he remembers which off-ramp, he remembers where he went left and right, mm. how he got to this place where he was then picked up, but can't remember who picked him up, nor who brought him back to Kitty's car the next day. It's part of um, the total picture that we are seeing under the scrutiny of judicial process. Uh, Oscar has had to be served up in totality uh, for the defense to get home on uh, his defense of a legally excusable killing. And in serving him up, um, they've exposed him unavoidably to the state via Herinel, exposing any and all problems that he can. Because part of the difficulty, even if we go back to the earlier issue around the alarms, uh, Hirinel traps him into making an admission that the alarm would have been activated. Uh, he would have had to have deactivated it to go open the door to allow the estate manager in to come and assist him. Yes. But if that was the case, why would he then assume the robbers were able to gain entry without uh, setting the alarm off? Bongani, you've made the obvious point. It's just one other problem that is being exposed as the story is scrutinized and exposed. Uh, so, uh, yes, that question, and it's a valid question, arises. Why does he simply assume with utter conviction uh, as he charges forward, like Rambo, some would say, uh, to attack the threat uh, that, uh, that is... Uh, why is it that his alarm did not pick this up? Well, he then says, well, <clears throat> you know, it's possible that perhaps the painters uh, who were painting at his house earlier uh, might have uh, removed uh, the beacon where it would have then picked them up, allowing them to return at a later time. I mean, uh, is this partly influenced by the environment of being in court and the pressure? And maybe, of course, uh, in your former role, you've mm -hmm. seen... Uh, lots of witnesses buckle under, not because they're not telling the truth, but because they really just are battling to deal with the pressure of cross-examination. Uh, Bongani, I should tell you that when I was young, I had a motorbike. I made a racket outside the high court in Harare, dropping my girlfriend. I was dragged into a court, presided over by the great Sir Huey Beadle. I will tell you, that was the most terrifying time of my life, and I was very happy to escape. But that fear, uh, that... Um, I can only call it fear that I had of courts, never left me, so that even when I walked into the same court as a presiding judge many, many years later, I still felt it, and I still felt it throughout my judicial career. It's a very, I don't know, I can't find an adjective to describe it, but it does get to you. It is an environment that is, that is not so much hostile, not so much intimidating, but you know that this is a different place. You are out of your environment. And um, it's a very serious business. And For ordinary people, it will be highly intimidating. But also now to do it you know, in front of the whole world, literally. I mean, every South African, even if you didn't by some <coughs> miracle know who Oscar Pistorius was before this, well, you certainly do now. And, and you know every detail of his life. You've been to his bedroom. You've seen the layout of his house. You, you know his routine. You know his fights with his ex-girlfriend and, and his relationships and the friends he had around. You know his habits. You know his life. You know every single 
part of his life. And he knows that. He is feeling that exposure with an intensity that we can't even start to imagine. Um, and um, for that reason, I would say that he's very, very vulnerable to an attack by somebody as competent by Harry Nell, even if he's telling the truth. The other difficulty, of course, is that, you know, if you are reconstructing a particular version, um, as details are on, you might remember the broader strokes. You might have rehearsed the broader picture that you are telling. But as details are being now raised, uh, hairs are being pulled, it becomes a little difficult to maintain. Yeah, I would say the converse applies. Um, you are putting forward the central aspect of your case. And in putting that forward, you are then attacked on the supporting factors that should be in place if what you're putting forward is true. And that is where the difficulties then arise if uh, your main uh, defense, the central aspect of your case, is not true. Now, does the judge, I mean, we've talked about how he, she has to look at the totality of the evidence that is being presented. Does it necessarily mean that if a witness trips up on one or two seemingly side issues, that the judge can then make a determination as to uh, the whole case? No. Uh, there are facts in issue, there are facts relevant to the issue, and there are overall supporting circumstances as regards both those first two. And the judge has to embark on a value judgment on, on, on all of these. And there are certain aspects which she would say, well, I wouldn't expect him to get this wrong. So if he then gets that wrong, that is more serious. And peripheral issues, uh, she might uh, reach the conclusion saying, well, Okay, he's forgotten that one. We're all human. Judge, uh, we'll leave it at that for now. I've got a question for you. I want to know if he could still be found, uh, he could still be found innocent, even if he's found to have misled the court in certain areas. But keep that answer for now, uh, because of course, Zahedi now also asked Oscar about an altercation between himself and Quinton <coughs> Vandenberg.